Hey, I thought I would do a little quick review for Icy. I'm actually not going to talk about it too much because I actually wrote out several paragraphs on the uh, Steam page earlier today. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to link to that, and I guess you can you can read that over the, the raw footage that I put out. It doesn't really seem like the game is uh, going to have a large English community. It seems like uh, when I reviewed the game, I was the only English reviewer. They were like... I think like right when it came out, there were a couple dozen uh, Chinese reviews, but none in English. So I was the first English reviewer, and I beat the game uh, earlier today. I had to go out and get some stuff done. I went out and grabbed a pizza, went to the dollar store. I beat the game before then. Uh, I didn't stream it. I actually recorded uh, pretty much all the boss fights. I think I missed like one or two at the beginning. The game is very short. Uh, I'll tell you that right now. The, the $10 price tag, I can tell that it's priced that for a reason, but uh, at the same time, compared to other high quality indie games, uh, there's really not a whole lot there. Uh, I thought, the way that the game ended, I thought that there was some kind of a hidden boss or something, and there were two uh, boss achievements that I didn't get uh, on my achievement list, and I thought that those were hidden bosses, but it turns out, uh, I don't know if you guys care about spoilers, but there's a boss that you can spare. Uh, the narrator will tell you to kill the boss, it's a, it's a you know, just a robot woman that's standing there defenseless. The boss will tell you to kill her. If you stand there for a few minutes, then the narrator will get pissed off and the door opens anyway and the boss in the next room gets disabled as well. Just kind of starts uh, sparking and stuff like that. So I guess those were the two bosses that I was missing. Uh, I, I went like looking around for like maybe like an hour earlier today when I recorded that raw gameplay footage. And I couldn't find anything. And then I find out, uh, I actually talked to someone on the Steam forums and he said that all there really is to do uh, after you beat all the bosses is just go back and piss off the narrator. Which is funny. Uh, the narrative is, is actually pretty funny, but at the same time I feel like it would really hurt the replay value. I would like to speedrun the game. It's definitely, uh, I could see it being short enough to, for it to be something that I would like to speedrun. But all the unskippable cutscenes would really bog down on me. One of the problems with the game is sometimes it's unclear on where to go uh, due to the whole, you know, virtual reality meta plot that it has. Sometimes you get, like, put back right next to the boss or you get put back at the stage select screen or the level select screen. And you know, you're not really told where to go. And due to the way that the game is structured, it's structured kind of like... Uh, a Metroidvania and like a Devil May Cry game at the same time. You know, in Devil May Cry, obviously, uh, bosses aren't permanently dead. If you go back to the mission or the level, they respawn. In most Metroidvania games, it's the opposite. You know, you kill a boss and it's gone for that whole run, you know, until you start a new game plus or a new file completely. In this game, is basically the bosses are always there. So if the game confuses you and you go back into a boss room, not only do you have to fight it again, you also have to watch all the unskippable cutscenes. Uh, sometimes it was, it was very unclear on where to go. Uh, even with all the times getting lost, there were uh, two bosses that I had trouble with. I finished the game in about roughly four hours, and a lot of that was, uh, you have to factor in that like 15 minute overview video that I did, uh, and all the raw gameplay and stuff. So the game, you can finish the game in like two, three hours. If you want to go find the other stuff, you can. Uh, <laughs> Given that uh, I couldn't find any gameplay footage for the game at all yesterday, and uh, I uploaded a bunch of my stuff on the Steam Community Hub for the game, no one else has. Uh, I don't know if anyone else is going to put up the cutscenes. I don't particularly care to. I think I've done pretty much everything on the game. The upgrade system, uh, I didn't really elaborate on that in my written review on the Steam page. The upgrade system is a little lackluster. Uh, pretty much level 1 unlocks the move, and then the rest are just damage increases. There does not seem to be a new game plus, uh, however you have access to all the levels at the end of the game. Uh, it functions very much like uh, most RPGs, you know, like Tales games. You kind of get, uh, you get a, like an unnamed clear save, and you can go back to the level select screen, and you can go back and fight all the bosses. All the enemies respawn. Uh, even if you go back to the level select screen, the enemies will respawn again. So if you want to farm to max out your character <laughs> for whatever reason, even though uh, I beat the game on hard mode and it was really not challenging at all. I had a lot of problems with the humanoid boss because uh, he just has, uh, he only has like two attacks that have any tells. Uh, one of the problems I had with the game was not really the length. Uh, the unskippable cutscenes was what bothered me the most. Uh, honestly, if it was uh, as short as it was 
and it didn't have the unskip the unskippable cutscenes, like I probably would speed run the game and get a really good time for it. The problem I had with the game is there's a lot of attacks that have basically no tell at all. Uh, a good example is uh, the fat guy. You think he's like the second or third boss that you fight? Uh, he has a grab where he grabs you with his belly and spits you out. Uh, that has basically no tell at all. You kind of just have to use your uh, your gut reflex to dodge at the right time and counter. There's several grabs like that in the game. Uh, pretty much every grab in the game you can't react to. Uh, it will happen instantly. Another good example, I believe uh, I should have the boss fight out for that tomorrow. It's scheduled to go out at midnight. Uh, that boss in particular, uh, he has a bunch of attacks that just have no tell at all. They come out instantly, and since he doesn't stagger, uh, <laughs> you think he would stagger? You, know, you can kind of make him stagger, but you can't really launch him. Uh, it renders most of your moveset useless. The balance is actually pretty good. Uh, I like fighting the regular enemies. I actually like fighting the hyper-armored enemies more than the, uh, you know, the humanoid bosses. Apparently, I missed out on one humanoid boss because I, uh, I spared the boss before him. But I fought every other boss in the game, and they're all very fun to fight. Uh, the last boss in particular is difficult until you realize you need to just stay on the ground. Uh, I probably died to that boss several times because I was trying to speedrun it and hit his head. It's actually safer to stay on the ground. Uh, you guys will see that boss fight in a few days. So if you want a uh, you know a pretty high quality action game with uh, some pretty funny narrative, you can get the game for ten bucks. But if you're expecting replay value, uh, there's much better action games uh, on Steam for that price point that would uh, give you a lot more replay value. Uh, a lot of which I've already covered on this channel: 20XX, Streets of Fury. Stuff like that will uh, give you a lot more bang for your buck. You can finish the game in one sitting pretty much. If you have any experience at all with uh, 2D action games, uh, you can plow through it pretty fast, even on hard mode. The most annoying thing, uh, you know, some of the bosses, they have unskippable cutscenes before them. You have to watch them. The developers don't really seem to want to uh, remove them. Which I think is kind of odd because, uh, you know, the game kind of really feels like it's something that's meant to be played more than once because there are secrets that you can go back and get. Uh, you can go back in the post-game, which is not really much of a post-game. You just kind of get plopped back into the game world. Or you can get them on another playthrough. But there's no New Game Plus. So if you want to play the game, you have to watch all that shit again, which I'm not particularly interested in. Uh, I'm still waiting for Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 to be patched, so... Maybe I'll like throw up some splits and I'll do like an all bosses new game plus run for it or something. But uh, I can't really see anybody doing a new game run for that because the, the cutscenes, uh, it would honestly add several minutes. I'm kind of interested to see if anyone does speed run it. I wonder if it's faster to uh, spare the boss and skip the boss after it than it is to just kill both bosses. Uh, there's a lot of shit you just have to watch. It's pretty boring to watch, especially on a subsequent playthrough. Like when I was doing all the videos and stuff, you know, to show people what the game is like because no one else seems to have done that, at least not in English. I was getting pretty frustrated watching the cutscenes. I feel like uh, in 2016, no matter how good your narrative is, uh, the narrative in the game is actually well translated, which I think is something that should be commended considering uh, I think the developers are from Shanghai. Uh, their English is very good. Um, the problem is, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to read what the narrator is saying when you're fighting like 10 robots at once. But it's all really well written, well translated. It's just I feel like they should not shove it down your throat. Uh, I've always had a very strong stance on cutscenes. I feel like no matter how good or bad they are, they should be skippable because uh, it adds replay value to your game. <laughs> That's one reason why people... Uh, you know, Star Ocean 4 is a prime example, a game that came out this year that no one really talks about anymore because uh, of all the unskippable cutscenes. Like, even if you, uh, if you die on a boss in Star Ocean 4, you have to stand there and watch the characters talk and just stand in place <laughs> for minutes on end. Uh, I think that stuff needs to go, and I hope that, you know, the game has, like, I think, like, 350 reviews on the Steam page right now. Most of them are Chinese, of course, but for a $10 indie game, I think that means that they're uh, making a pretty good amount of money on it. I hope that it will have pretty good post-launch support. It could do with some uh, some extra stuff, maybe like a Bloody Palace mode, a New Game Plus, and a uh, cutscene skip, and I'd probably play it a lot more. It's a pretty fun game to just go through, but at the same time, uh, you know, watching all those cutscenes is definitely going to grade on you. Uh, like I said, the only thing you really have to do, left to do after you finish the story, 
is you can go back and you can piss off the narrator and get a bunch of extra cutscenes. Apparently that's all there is. Uh, the ending is pretty cryptic. It's very short. Uh, it feels kind of odd with how much narrative they <laughs> shove down your throat throughout the rest of the game. But overall, I don't regret my purchase. It was a fun game. You know, I, I managed to get four hours out of it. I'll probably do a, a boss speed run on it. Maybe later this week or something like that. I'm still waiting for Xenoverse 2 to get patched. Apparently, they did a balance patch yesterday for the console versions, and we're supposed to be getting that on Steam, quote unquote, soon. <laughs> I don't know how long that's going to take, but, uh, you know, we're all waiting for it. I might still get the game on PS4. I think I have enough funds. I'll have enough Amazon credit to get it. Maybe, maybe not. I am kind of low on cash right now. What's going to happen next month is uh, there's not really any games that I'm interested in getting that aren't just going to be uh, random one-off surprises like Icy was. I wasn't really planning on getting Icy at all. I just went on the Steam page. I looked at the 30-second trailer, thought it was cool, and you know I lucked out. It was actually a really good game. But uh, in terms of like you know planned releases and projects and stuff like that, I don't have anything going on next month. So next month, uh, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to combine my Patreon money, my Curse money, and then try to do a little fundraiser, maybe for like maybe $75 to $100 to get a... Uh, uh, GTX 1050 Ti and then a capture card for my friend and uh, maybe some extra RAM or a solid state drive uh, after that. We'll see how things go. Uh, apparently my family offered to get me something for Christmas even though I'm well past the age of getting Christmas gifts or you know big Christmas gifts so I might be able to do a uh, you know a big computer upgrade next month so I'll be working on that. I still have a bunch of prizes to give out so uh, during the fundraiser I obviously will not have to donate to me for that I'll be giving out a bunch of prizes. Uh, try to raise at least a little money so I can get a new uh, video card, maybe some more RAM and uh, whatever else is left. Maybe I'll get a solid state drive and uh, kind of take some of the work off my two terabyte hard drive. That would pretty much future proof my computer. Uh, you know, with the stuff that I play, small scale games, I should not need any more than that for a while. So that's what's going to happen in December. Uh, in games, it will probably just be, uh, you know, stuff I haven't finished. Xenoverse 2 will probably go well into December with how long they're taking to patch it. It's been almost a month, and we haven't had a single patch aside from fixing the DLC issues. So I'll be playing that, uh, probably God Eater, whatever else I can muster. Anyway, that's your little icy mini review. Uh, I will go ahead and I'll link to uh, you know my stuff if you guys want to help me out. I will also link to my uh, Steam review that I left for the game. It's probably the most... Uh, I don't know if it's the most detailed, but it's the one that I put out <laughs> as fast as possible. I just finished the game this afternoon, so you can go ahead and check that out. I will have uh, footage of the rest of the boss fights. has already been recorded. It will be going up throughout the next three days. Anyway, catch you guys later. Peace.